Thanks for coming out. I know it's the last show of the day, a lot of walking today. I think I've hit my 10,000 steps about you know three hours ago. Um, I'm really excited to be here on the KitchenAid stage. I got a chance to play with a bunch of these items this, this past week, and uh, a couple of things that kind of spoke to me. First off, for me, especially KitchenAid is kind of a nostalgic thing. Uh, I mean, going to my grandparents as a young kid, you always knew when the KitchenAid was out, the KitchenAid stand mixer, that you know, cookies, cakes, something special was gonna happen that day. So uh, it translated to my, my mom, she had one, she made meatloaf in it. Um, we eventually got the grinder attachment for it and we would make meatloaf that way, so it's, it's pretty cool. And then my kids learn how to make cookies with it too. So we're gonna make pot stickers. And uh, if you think about pot stickers, you're like, what, why is this guy making pot stickers? But you know, they have such a, they have a different name wherever you are in different parts of the world. I grew up, they're called pierogies. That's, you know, it's pretty much the same thing. A pan fried dumpling uh, filled. I really like a pot sticker dough better um, because of its flexibility. Uh, so we're gonna get started. First off, we got this guy here, this uh, little seven cup food processor. And it's really cool. The thing that I liked about it right away is that everything stores inside of it. Um, these blades, whenever you see a blade that has like a shiny part, it's usually bent. And that's because it's sitting in like, you know, in, at our house, it's sitting in a shoe box because we don't have anywhere else to store it. These all store in the blade, which is right inside the housing, which is awesome. So we're gonna use the chopping attachment, which is one of the best things about uh, making pot stickers is like it's not about you can get it all done right in here earlier we uh, sh uh, Shredded cabbage using the sh uh, shredding attachment salted it so it's a little bit nice and wilted And then we're going to use it to chop up some dried mushrooms that we soaked shiitakes and again like it's just about kind of making oops, Getting it made pretty quickly because It's not about how pretty the filling is. It's about how delicious it is. So we're going to Pop that guy in there and just let it beat it up. All right, so we got that going. I got a big piece in there. I'm gonna pull that one out, leave that to the side. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some of the, the chicken. I like, I like chicken pot stickers. I like pork ones too. But we found that um, at the restaurant especially, we use ch chicken thigh meat as I break everything today. Um, we use chicken thigh meat. Chicken thigh can hold a lot of liquid, so we're actually going to add some soy sauce, uh, a little bit of sherry, some sugar, just a little bit, and we're going to give this a couple pulses again. Oh, and actually, we're going to throw in some onion, some scallion. All these things taste great together. And what we do by adding a lot more moisture to it, it makes it just for a moisture dumpling when you're when you're making it, it'll all hold together really well. We'll start on low, move up to high. Again, it's, it's not gonna be the most pretty of things. You're like, what the hell is this guy doing with this piece of machinery? So, and then we're gonna pop in our cabbage just to get it all put together. Any kind of filling, whether you're making ravioli, pot stickers, um, any, anything like that, pierogies, the filling does way better if you let it, if you get it chilled after you made it. All right, so this will go in a bowl into the, in this really nice part, it lifts straight up. You're not like trying to figure out, did I go 45 degrees to the left, right? So nice piece, this can go just in a bowl. We'll use that for our, for the next demo. Um, so we're gonna move over to our dough. Uh, I made the dough ahead of time, and it's what is considered a, a hot water dough. So we use boiling water and, uh, boiling water and, and flour, and we're just gonna, I cheat, because I'm like, okay. Like traditionally you would roll this out into balls and then you would form each ball. And I was like, well, we're just gonna, we're gonna use the pasta attachment and we'll, cut, we'll use a cutter. Being a chef, it's, it's all good. I'm gonna bring power of TV here. We got some pre-made dough or pre-made filling. So we're gonna bring this over. I'm gonna flour my work surface as well. And then we're gonna use the, the pasta attachment. This actually, it was funny you mentioned the signature room. We used to run our pasta program. I was trying to convince the, the ownership that we needed to have a pasta program. And they're like, well, the, the, the professional machines are just a ton of money. And so I was like, well, all right, we'll do it with this KitchenAid attachment. And when we went through like seven of these attachments, because making dump, you know, making ravioli, making fresh pasta for five, 600 people, 
it, it takes a beating. So um, they're like, all right, we'll, we'll move up to the, big, to the big leagues. But this is something I have in the house. I make pasta with my kids. They love it. They think it's the coolest thing ever. Even if the pasta is horrible, they think it's still the best that they've ever made because they made it. Um, so we'll make some more, more balls. Just going to roll it out. I save the dough for one more round. I'll just put it in the fridge and let it cool, uh, cool down and relax the gluten a little bit. Pop it through a couple times. We'll make a couple more here. So again, these are just a fun thing to do, like, you know, using the attachments. There's, I was looking online, and there's like 14 or 15 different attachments. I wish I had gotten all of them, because I would have loved to actually mill the flour. There's a flour mill, there's a juicer, there's a juice attachment. The, the meat grinding attachment we used earlier to make, to grind the chicken. Um, I've used it at home, it's a, it's a great piece of equipment. So we got those, there's three, cut a couple more. And it's, it looks like it's really soft, um, which is great for when you're stuffing it full of filling. So it makes it a lot easier to move around the filling. Just a couple of wax with a little dusting of flour and we're good. All right, we'll go one more. I'm gonna make this one a little bit thinner. Get it to work for me here. So we have, a, we have a few pot stickers here. Again, you, you, know, you can take, take your time, cut them out nice and beautifully. You save the dough. You put it back in the fridge for a little bit, let it rest, and you can make a few more. And then the next part, which everyone is like, oh my gosh, this is the hardest part. Because a lot of times, uh, I was actually asking Shirley how I did with the folds on my pot stickers, and she said, actually, you did, you did really well. So, but. The first time I learned how to make a pot sticker, it was, it was literally making a pierogi. It was pretty much putting the filling in. You know, there's that uh, the spray bottle of water. I'll just take some, it's, yeah, boiling water, it's okay. I'm gonna use, I've done this before. Um, so the water you use just to seal it, but you pretty much have, a, you have a dumpling. You have a dumpling right there. So there, there's a, great. So, there's one dumpling done, okay? It's not the prettiest of ones, so that's gonna be our next one. Uh, a woman taught me how to make pot stickers, how to make the folds, because there's something magical about it, how it makes them look really nice. And you just sit there and you just kind of pleat them. And then just give them a little press. And the, the nice thing about this dough is you can really stuff them full of uh, of the filling, and that's, I think, the best part of a dumpling is like, it, you have this nice little encased meatball, for lack of a better word. So, we'll make a couple of these. Yeah. So, that's, we got a couple of those made. I made a whole bunch earlier today, too. Um, and so then the next, the next step is just to, to get them cooked off. Traditionally, you would, you would start them in a wok and then steam them. I'm, again, that pierogi guy in me wants to first boil them and then sear them. So we're gonna drop them into our, our boiling water. I'm gonna move the water around a little bit. So I know they won't stick. And with the pasta attachments, like we made this, the sh this is the sheeter attachment. They also have like tagliatelle and a couple of other ones that you can make, you know, you can have Italian night at the house. You just make your dough ahead of time, get it rolled out, and then you, people get to pick their shape and you can just have pasta in like two minutes. So, all right, this out of the way here. All right. So those are cooking. While those are cooking, we have a couple of other things up here. We made a little dipping sauce as well. Um, again, everything, the, the nice thing about a, you know, like a machine like this food processor is you can get it all done in there like really quickly. It's not sitting there chopping by hand for hours. Just peel some garlic, you pop it in, you throw your other stuff in there. Really beats the flavor into the 
to the sauce and to the soy sauce. Um, so we have shall, or garlic and uh, ginger, a little bit of minced scallion, soy sauce, and some black rice vinegar for dipping. Any questions? All right. Everyone's like, no, I'm ready for a martini. Yes, Laura. Yes. This part here? Yes, you're, what we're doing is cooking the, uh, the pasta and the, and the dumpling inside. They'll take about three, four minutes. It's a fresh pasta. It will, you don't have to get through like a, like a dried pasta. It just takes much longer. We're looking at like maybe four to five minutes tops total because they're also gonna get seared, which they, that will also provide some, uh, some cook too. So water is a great way, cooks things really quickly, boiling water. Any other questions right now? So just kind of playing with this one, actually, if you were like in Italy, you bring the ends around, and now you have a big old fat tortellini, you know? So again, it's just kind of fun to play with, play with the shapes. You can do the pleats. I've seen online or on TV, too. They have like the ones that you can, you know, if you want to make a, a pot sticker or a pierogi, like with the pleats, you can actually buy a thing that does it. Those work really well, too. A uh, little folding machine. Otherwise, just right in half is totally good, too. Pop that guy in there and let him cook as well. All right, so these are usually, I don't like to boil them. I like them to go into boiling water and then to just simmer. That way, everything does cook through really nicely. Um, I want to make sure that the protein's cooked inside, the pasta's cooked, all those things. And so when they start to float and get, you know, kind of move around really nicely, I don't also, I don't want to break them up in the water either. And I'll, they're starting to feel really good. I know, again, I'm sticking my fingers in boiling water, but that's just what chefs do, so it's by habit. Um, you can also steam these if you have a steaming, if you like to steam food. I like them boiled because I feel like the dough cooks a little bit better. So you have that really nice texture of, of uh, soft dough on the inside, but also like crispy on the outside from searing. So we're gonna pull some of these ones that I put in first out, just dry them off a little bit here. We'll turn our heat up, make sure it's on. That always helps. So what's the best thing you've seen out at the show today? Anybody? What, what, am I, what have I missed? Besides, besides KitchenAid, which is amazing. What other displays? Any favorite displays you've seen today? Or cooking equipment or bowls you bought or anything like that, guys? Did you catch any of the demos earlier? I came in on the Chris Kimball one. That one looked pretty awesome. Shirley, who was just before me, did a great job, I thought. It sounded delicious. I learned something new on how to fry garlic. Yeah, which I right? was like, that was a challenge. She improvised very well with that. All right, so these are just gonna go into a pan. Lightly dry, you know, just slightly dried off. Now the next, the next uh, thing is to get them nice and crispy. Um, hi, Pat, Laura, yes. longtime fan. Um, I have another question. Can you put cheese in the middle of those? Can you put cheese in these? Yeah. Like if you, did, you didn't want to do a protein, could you put cheese? You could, for sure. I would go with like a, I would I'd do a mix of a harder and soft cheese. So like in Italian cooking, ricotta is very classic, but you mix it with Parmesan just so you don't have like a super gooey kind of a mess. And again, that's why po I'm a big fan of poaching them versus boiling them because when cheese melts, it separates and becomes water and water boils and blows them up. So you want to just to nicely poach them. Uh, I don't know how well they would do on the searing part, but that sounds kind of good. I was actually in back, I was thinking, I wonder if you could do like a cheeseburger dumpling, you know, thinking about fun stuff for the restaurant. Can I have a, oh here, you know what? We got some spoons here. 
So those are starting to get some nice color on them. Looking good. These, this step, like the boiling step, you can get these done up to an hour before people come. The other thing you could do, because they're not, they're not that much fun to sit there and make by yourself, it's a much more, it's a lot more fun over a glass of wine in a communal effort, is, you know, you get the, the filling already, and then you have people help you make the actual pot stickers, or dumplings, or raviolis. And when we would make pierogies, it was like five, six, uh, members of the family, dads, uncles, aunts, grandmas, all together, and everyone kind of like swapped in and out because you would make a thousand of them and just divvy them up by the house. You know, they would go in the freezer, and then you have dinner afterwards. So, all right, so I'm going to use this towel here again just to get the excess grease off. Let a couple of these go a little bit longer. That one looks pretty good. All right. Turn that down a little bit. And then we would just artfully arrange them on a, on a plate. So we have a couple of these stuck together. But there we go. So it's just nicely seared. So they're crispy, crunchy. Uh, they're, they'll be juicy in the middle because we put a lot of good stuff in there. There's a little drizzle of the sauce over the top and just some fresh cilantro for a nice fresh bite. All right. So some chicken pot stickers. Who's ready for dinner? Do you have any questions? Any questions on the pot stickers or the sauce? So if you're out and about in the city, I'm at City Mouse, the Ace Hotel. We're in the West Loop neighborhood. I uh, would love to see you. Stop by and ask for me. Uh, Morgan and Fulton. So, yeah. Great.